Matt Hancock might have stepped back from frontline politics, but he appears to have no intention of stepping back from the nation's televisions. And if this Good Morning Britain interview is anything to go by, his career as a generic celebrity could be even more of a car crash than his career as the nation's health secretary. Guidance that was in place. No, I'm talking about the legal the restrictions. No, I... These have been confirmed to us by Adam Wagner, uh, the barrister from Doughty Street Chambers, who, right. as we know, keeps the receipts on all the legal changes at the time. Yeah. Based on what we know, he says, this seems to me to have been an illegal gathering. No, I didn't break the law. Um, and you know, there, were, there were fines issued, as we all know. Why didn't you break the law? If it, was it reasonably necessary for work purposes? No, I, the, the guidance was in place at the time with the... No, you're the, you're the pivoting. Plus you are pivoting no, to social distancing. I, I'm not sorry, talking, I <clears throat> Not talking about social distancing guidelines. I'm talking well, that about was the, the law. They were the guidelines that I They that might I well broke. have been, and you definitely yeah. broke those, because yeah. you were definitely yeah. not a metre so, away from so, so the I'm talking so about the law. Mm. England was at stage two of COVID restrictions. I'm not sure that's the case. Look, um, I, don't... I am absolutely sure that's right. the case. Right. I don't have the dates in front of me. and You were health secretary at the time. No, but... You brought the regulations in. Of course. Of course. And I don't have if them in front of me. If anybody should have known the law, it of course, would have been I you. I, of course. Absolutely. It happened on the 6th of May. We were still under stage two. It was a breach of the law. No, it wasn't a breach of the law. Well, what, what... It was a breach of the guidelines. And I've been through that If the law endlessly. says that no person may participate in a gathering which consists of two or more people and takes place indoors. The only exemption was work purpose purposes where it was reasonably necessary. You must be arguing it was reasonably necessary. No, I'm obviously, you know, <laughs> that's obviously not, I wouldn't make that argument. Um, but the guidelines were in place on social distancing. And so was the law. They were the, no, the law... On this, on this point, I can't remember the exact dates, but it was lifted in April, and I uh, remember On the 14th that to be the of case. May, that law was changed, and no, the, we went to uh, stage, stage three. There were further stages after that point. There were there no were. stages between stage two and stage three. Uh, there was. That was on the. Um, that was in April. The change came into. Anyway, I've look. I've been through this endlessly. This um, point. Um, and I've explained so you've it. You've been through it endlessly, but you don't know what the law is. I know exactly. I, I, I do, and I'm explaining. You said it to you, you don't, and you didn't have the dates in front I don't of have you. The but dates. when I gave you the dates, you say it didn't. It wasn't in existence at the time. No, that's right. The I the guidelines were in place, and I accept that I broke the guidelines, but I didn't break the law. <laughs> the dude has forgotten what the law was at what time when he was health secretary. It was quite the skewering. A lot to say about it, but instead, I just want to go straight on to the next one because it is even worse. Are you telling the truth when you say that it wasn't your primary uh, absolutely motivation? Absolutely, I am. Absolutely. Of course. So did you negotiate over the fee? The, of course there was a discussion and negotiation over the fee. There always is on these things, as you know. But the point is that the, the primary reason is because I have, I developed over the uh, pandemic, over lockdown and over my resignation, you know, I ended up very, a very public figure. And I felt that the, what the public knew about me was through a particular lens, you know, coming on this programme and Piers Morgan uh, mm -hmm. shouting monologues at me for 20 minutes. You call it the end. Piers Morgan mincer? It was, it was just, uh, you know, it was totally ridiculous. Uh, uh, and well, other... once again, it's called being held to account. No, not that, not that stuff. That but, was just being told off. Well, this is being held to account. Can we stick to the money? Anyway, can we stick, no, 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 can we just exactly. stick? But I don't want to drift off the point, Sorry. because it's an important point. Okay. A lot of people will want a, a clearer answer. If you didn't do it for the money, and you did say before you went in that you were going to be making a substantial donation of your fee to charity, yeah. you got paid £330,000, you've kept £310,000 of it. You've only given, or rather, no, £320,000. You've only given £10,000 to two mm -hmm. charities, which is a tiny fraction of the fee. So if the money wasn't important to you, why have you held on to most of it? Well, I did absolutely give some of the money to charity. £10,000 yeah, out of £330,000. And, and they're two brilliant charities. No, come on, 10, 000, I'm talking about the amount, not the charities. £10,000. If you didn't do it for the money, why not give the money to the causes which need it? I, I said I didn't primarily do it for the money, but also 
You know, but if you've I, only I given ten thousand pounds to charity and you've kept three hundred and twenty, yeah. it would seem to most people who can do basic arithmetic that you did do it for the money. And I'm not saying that that's yeah, necessarily I, wrong. I, I, I just want to clear an honest answer. For yeah, you. that's what I'm giving you. I didn't primarily do it uh, for the money. I primarily did it to try to show who I really but you am. You primarily kept I, the money. I, 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 I gave a five-figure sum to charity. Ten thousand pounds out of three hundred and thirty. Sure, and you uh, keep skating off it and saying, "Well, I, a, a substantial sum." Yes, a, 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 a ten. Well, it a, is. Uh, it is, I, you know, I, and I'm really proud of the money that I raised for charity, not, you know, before, and I'll do lots in future. And, you know, I think that it's good giving money to charity. And, you know, I'm, they are, they're two absolutely fantastic What much is it, though, out of 330? Well, I think, I think £10,000 is actually... Did you decent. still get... You primarily kept the money is such a good line. Like, people take the piss out of Richard Maley, but I think he really justified his pay packet there. You primarily... Kept the money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't primarily you know, do it for the money. You primarily kept the money. <laughs> God. He's like, you know what, son? I didn't do it for the money. I did it for the attention. <laughs> like, it's like that doesn't make you seem better. But also, it's just like, it's just the thing. Like, I just loved like um, Susanna Reed being like, so was grabbing a handful of ass necessarily, you know, necessary? <laughs> Breaking social distancing rules. And he's like, yes, <laughs> it was a great app. Um, but I mean, honestly, just like, it's just like, I just, what he's doing, it's it's not even just about the money and like, whatever. I don't, I actually don't really care about the fee because like, yes, MPs disgrace themselves and then they go on and they make money in the speaking circuit or whatever. It's no worse making it off I'm a celebrity over making it off the, the speaking circuit that all other MPs go into but for me it's like it's the craving for celebrity and it's like the only reason anyone knows who you are Matt Hancock is because you were health secretary during the pandemic and you were disastrous at it like the the reason people know you it's not because you saw the nation through this like really difficult time and you know you made an and 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 you 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 know became a celebrity off of that it's like you made a name for yourself because you presided over thousands of care home deaths because you allowed people to be released from hospital back into homes without adequate testing or isolation. You failed to provide to, you know, bring in NH NHS um, lockdown. No, sorry. You failed to provide NHS workers with adequate PPE, leaving them, you know, having to resort to wearing bin bags as aprons. You delayed entering lockdowns at pretty much every turn and you handed out lucrative government contracts to your mates so given that that's why anyone knows who you are i think it's so disgusting that he's trying to exploit that into a celebrity career it's like if you if we lived in a civilized country like you wouldn't even be able to show yourself on tv let alone trying to do it like let alone trying to do it to kind of make a celebrity out of yourself. Like for me, actually, the attention seeking and the d idea that, you know, oh, I need to show people who I'm authentically am as if anyone cares. That to me is actually more insulting because it just shows that you saw this entire thing as, you know, an opportunity to make a name for yourself. And it, it's actually so insulting and offensive that people who lost their lives or people whose who's, who's family members and friends lost their lives, for example, in those care homes, have to switch on their TV and watch you, you know, stunting for money in that way on their screens. It's, it's, it's insulting. Like, it's really embarrassing to stain on the Tory party that he was ever the health secretary. I don't think stains show up like in the Tory party anymore. It's been like a skid mark, but the whole pair of boxes have turned brown. <laughs>